right, hello, fifth graders. Welcome to module four, lesson 24. We're in Eureka Math, and our objective today is to solve word problems using fraction and decimal multiplication, okay? So we're taking everything we've learned, and we're using some word problems. I'm gonna put a big star. You know how I love word problems. Great, so let's get right to our learn book. And please write your name on the paper, okay? A vial. Do you know the word vial? A vial is like a plastic tube, or glass, could be glass, glass tube, right? Okay, that we use in science. And a vial contains 20 millimeters of medicine, okay? So there's my glass tube, it's a vial. If each dose of is one eighth of the vial, how many doses um, can we get, right? So if you have to take your syringe, right? And there's, there's my syringe. Did you know that syringes, I'm a little off track here. Syringes right here are, you know, where you pull out and inside there they've got the little rubber stopper and you can pull stuff out of the syringe. Did you know that this part of the syringe is called a lure lock. Isn't that cool? I think some great distant relative of mine must have invented that. Okay, sorry, distracting. Okay, a vial contains 20 millimeter, 20 milliliters of medicine. Okay, if each dose is one eighth of the vial, How many milliliters is each dose? Express your answer as a decimal. Okay, so we need to express our answer as a decimal. One eighth of 20 milliliters. So we can solve as a fraction and then convert to decimals if we want. So let's see. That would equal 20 eighths, which equals two and one half milliliters. How do I know that? Well, 8 goes into 22 times, and that's 16 with 4 left over. So 20 divided by 8 would be 16, right? Wait a minute, sorry. 2, 16 with 4 left over, 4 eighths. And four eighths equals one half. So I just wrote it as one half. Four and two, one, two and a half milliliters. Now, I need to convert this to decimals. Okay, you already know that that's five and a half because you know half is um, five, uh, five tenths is the same as one half. But I'm gonna. Sh but we do need to show our work. So two and a half. We need to multiply by a number that's going to give us a, um, a decimal, I'm sorry, a, a, a power of 10. So I want this to equal 10. So I'm going to multiply this by five fives, right? And I can use my distributed property, right, to multiply five fives times two and five fives times one half. So here I've got two times five fifths plus one half times five fifths and that's going to give me two because that doesn't change plus five tenths okay so I'm going to have my answer is going to be two and five tenths well I can write that as two and five tenths milliliters, okay? All right, now that seemed like a lot of work, but we're still learning, so we must show all of our work to convert that to decimals. I know you wanna skip showing me all that work and you just wanna say 2.5, but you cannot because you must show your work. Number two, a container holds 0.7 or 7 tenths liters of oil and vinegar. Three quarters of the mixture is vinegar. So here's my container. I like to draw pictures. And this container, there's my information, holds 
0.7 liters of oil and vinegar. Three quarters of the mixture, so one, two, three, is vinegar. How many liters of vinegar are in the container? Express your answer as both a fraction and a decimal. So, 0.7 liters. We're going to multiply that by 3 quarters. So, can we multiply this yet? No, we can't. We're gonna, first, we're going to turn this into a decimal. I'm sorry, into a fraction. 0 0.7 is 7 tenths, right? And 7 tenths can also be written as 7 tenths. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. All of those things equal each other, right? So 7 tenths times 3 quarters equals 21 fortieths, okay, of a liter. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to multiply this number to get um, so this equals this. Now I'm going to do it in decimals. But this number I need to do some stuff with first. So three quarters, and I need a number that's going to give me something over 100, a power of 10, right? So I'm going to multiply that by 25. Okay. So 3 times 25 is 75 hundredths. Okay, and 75 hundredths I can write like this. So now I have 75 hundredths. Okay, oops, 75. I don't know what happened to my number. There we go, 75. Now I can multiply this and still get my decimal. So 0.75 times 0.7. That's 35, and that's 3, that's 49, 50, 51, 52. And I have one, two, three decimals, so 0.525 liters. Does that make sense? Because we just figured it out as a fraction. And this is a little bit more than half, isn't it? And 21 is a little bit more than half of 40. So this and this are our answers. And I will use a different color so that we can show that we have put our answers in both fractions and decimals. Okay, that's how much vinegar. How many liters of vinegar are in the container? Express your answer as both a fraction and a decimal. And if you want to put a vinegar, that's fine. Probably should, to be more clear. Okay, next one. Andres, I like that name, Andres. Andres completed a five kilometer race in 13.5 minutes. His sister's time for the same race was one and a half times longer than his time. How long in minutes did it take his sister to run the race? So she ran 13.5, he ran 13.5 minutes, and she took one and a half times longer. So here we've got our decimal and our fraction. How many minutes, how many minutes, that's what they're asking us for, did it take his sister to run the race? So we are going to convert this one and a half into minutes, okay? or into decimals because this is already in decimals. One and a half, so I'm, I could use my improper fraction would be three halves, right? Times what to get a decimal here? How many? I would need to get a decimal. I would need to multiply by five, right? Two times five is ten. Three times 5 is 15, okay, and that 15 tenths is the same as 1 and 5 tenths. So 13.5 minutes, and it took her one and a half times longer than him, so we're going to multiply by one and a half, 1 and 5 tenths, 
So 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2. 3 times 5 is 15. With 2 is 16, 17. Carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5. Plus 1 is 6. And drop a 1. And then 5, 3, 1. Then add. 12, 7, 8, 9, 10. Carry the 1 is 2. And I have one, two numbers. So it took her... It took her 20 minutes and 20.25 20 minutes. Okay. Almost. Okay. All right. A clothing factory uses 1,275.2 tenths meters of cloth a week to make shirts. How many cloth, how much cloth is needed to make three and three quarters times as many shirts? So that's more than almost a month's worth. Okay, so 1,275.2 meters times three and three fifths. Okay, so this we need to turn into a decimal. And I can use, um, either one of my methods to do that. I'm just going to use an improper fraction here. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 16, 17, 18 fifths. And I need to multiply by that by something to get me a factor of ten, or a power of 10. So I can just multiply 5 times 2 to get 10. So that means 18 times 2 is... 36, which equals 3 and 6 tenths. Okay, so 3 and 6 tenths. Now I can multiply. 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 1 is 31, carry the 3. 6 times 7 is 42. Plus 3 is 43, 44, 45. Carry the 4. 6 times 2 is 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. Carry the 1. 6 times 1 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. And drop a 0. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. 3 times 7 is 21. Plus 1 is 22. Carry the 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 7, 8, and 3 times 1 is 3. 2, 7, 10, carry the 1, 6, 7, 8, 9, 15, carry the 1, it's 4, okay. And I have one, two decimals here. So my answer is how much cloth is needed to make 3 and 3 quarter times shirts? 4,590 and 72 tenths meters of cloth. Okay, number five. There are three quarters as many boys as girls in a class of fifth graders. If there are 35 students in the class, how many are girls? Okay, there are three quarters as many boys as girls in a class of fifth graders. Three quarters. Mm -hmm. Three quarters as many boys as girls in the class of fifth graders. This would tell us how many boys there are. Okay. And the opposite of that would be one fourth times 35 would equal the girls, right? So, wow, there's one girl to every three boys. Ooh, that's a lot of boys. So I can figure this out for the girls. Okay, so that equals 35 over 4. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. Uh, 
the reason I say it doesn't make sense is because 3 goes into, 4 goes into 35, not an even number of time. And these are people, so we can't cut people in a half. So let me see. What am I doing wrong? I might have to look this one up too. That is probably not going to work. Three quarters as many boys as girls. Let me just see if I can draw a tape diagram. There are 35 students in the class. And whatever the number, and we don't know what that number is of girls, that number times three quarters equals the number of boys. I think I'm going to need some help here. Let me go find this one. I think I'm missing something. Okay. There are three quarters as many boys. Mm, okay. So there's a number of girls and there are three quarters as many boys. So there are actually less boys than girls. So that means seven units. Ah, okay. So, okay. Let me erase this. Let me start over. Sometimes, even when you read it carefully, you still don't quite understand what they're asking. So there are three quarters as many girls. Okay, tape diagram. Here's the number of girls. And here is the number of boys. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and then this would be three quarters of the number of girls, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are 35 in the class. So this plus this equals 35. And I know that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and I can divide that by seven. 35 divided by seven equals five. So each of these represents five kids. Okay, so there are 20 girls and 15 boys. 20 girls. Okay, there are three quarters as many boys as girls, and there are 15 altogether, 35 altogether. Okay. All right, that wasn't as hard as I thought, but I was having a hard time reading it. Let me just come back here and, yeah, okay. All right. Zero purchased a concert ticket for $56. The cost of the ticket was four-fifths the cost of his dinner. The cost of his, oh my goodness, this was a big night out for him. So his ticket was, here's his ticket, and we know that it was four-fifths the cost of his dinner, so we'll put five here. So this is the ticket, and this is dinner. The cost of his hotel was two and a half times as much as his ticket. Okay, well we already know the ticket was $56. Okay, so this is worth 56, and we split it into four. Then 56 divided by 4 would be 14. So each of these is worth $14. Okay? Now, his the cost of his ticket was only four-fifths the cost of his dinner. So his dinner was 14 plus 14 plus 14. Wow, that is an expensive dinner. Okay, I hope he was buying for his whole family. The cost of his hotel was two and a half times the cost of his ticket. So that was two and a half times 56. Okay, so here this is 56 and this is 70, 
right? 14 times 5 is 70. Yes, okay. And then here is the cost of his hotel. How much did Ciro spend together for the concert tickets, hotel, and dinner? Okay. So this is an expensive weekend. Two and a half times 56. Okay, so that would be five halves times 56 would be 56 times 5 is 30, 3 is 25, 26, 7, 28. 280 over 2 equals 140. Oh, that's a nice hotel. I hope you spent two nights. Okay, so 140 on the hotel. Now we have to add all this together. I'm going to switch colors so you guys don't get confused. So, six, 12, 13, 40, 15, 16, carry the one, $266. So for the concert, the hotel, and dinner, he spent $266. Yeah, that was a really good concert. It sounds really expensive to me. Okay. All right, let me just check and make sure that I got the same answer that they got. Yes, 266, good. Okay, so finish that up, and then uh, go do your exit ticket, which is just two story problems, and then come back and do your homework. If you have any questions, ask me in class.